Welcome to episode 300. Strive Masiva, the first and only self-made billionaire from Zimbabwe. This is an outline of episode 300. There are three reasons why we study Strive Masiva. First, he's the first and only self-made billionaire from Zimbabwe. Second, he belongs to a new generation of young African entrepreneur with zero tolerance for corruption. Third, he built a successful multinational with sales in five continents based in South Africa. Strive Masiiva was born in 1961 in Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. This is a map of Zimbabwe. When he was seven, his family went to exile in a mining town called Kitwe in Zambia. This is a map of Kitwe. He learned to be an entrepreneur from his mother by selling chewing gums. Um, when, when I was a little boy, my mother, uh, she came up with this idea that uh, I should earn my own pocket money. So she bought me a box of chewing gum and I started selling them to my school, in my school. Uh, but I got lost on the way back home because I really couldn't read that well, because I was only little. So I quickly learned that you gotta be able to sell. I could count, but I couldn't read before. Uh, that's probably why I did maths and engineering. <laughs> Southern Rhodesia, his mother was an entrepreneur who through her entrepreneurial efforts, was able to raise enough money to send Strive to the University of Wales. This is what Mashiiva learned about the mobile revolution at the University of Wales. I'm an, I'm an engineer in, in telecommunications, so the whole mobile revolution was something I had been tracking since school, actually. You know, when, when I was at university, we already knew what was going on, like most engineers do at, at school, you know. You, if you want to know what's going on in artificial intelligence, talk to the guys at Stanford. They'll tell you what's going to happen in 10 years. Came back, he came back to an independent Zimbabwe in 1984. He uses experience from university to work at the state-owned telephone company. And after getting tired and frustrated with uh, the bureaucracy, his entrepreneurial efforts started to show and he went and started his own engineering firm. He started his first business, construction, at the age of 25, while he was an engineer at a government telephone company. It was called Retrofit Engineering. By the, by the time I decided to set up Econet in 1993, I had been in business for about six or seven years. So I had a well-established business because I started in 1986 so I was actually 25 and um, the so I had built up a fairly successful uh, construction business. Before 1998 the telecoms industry that Strive was starting to get into was completely owned by the government it was a monopoly and the situation with Strive wanting to come into the telecoms industry was like a jackal facing an elephant and the odds were pretty much against him. But because of Strive's tenacity and this dream that was burning inside of him, he didn't stop. In 1993, at the age of 32, he founded Econet. And it was about this big and the SIM card was unbelievably huge. I think there were only about 12 people on the first network and uh, my father was, was, was one of those people. So. Many of you probably heard about the long legal battle that Econet fought in Zimbabwe for its first license. We prepared our papers to file a constitutional challenge to the right of the government to be the only ones who operate a telephone company. There had been a tender over this license. The courts had ordered over and over and over again. And each time the government had said no. How he built his company based on values a company of prayer, a company of zero tolerance for corruption. The first thing that sets our foundation as a company is the issue of values. Our value system at Econet is based on our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ. The most important foundation for any business is the value system. Econet is a, is a company of prayer 
for four and a half years, we went through some very difficult circumstances. But it was really our faith that carried us through. The foundation of it is the value system that's at play in the, in the organization. We have set up certain practices in our company, which I will share with you, that we're going to be a praying company. And every single morning, for an hour in our company, I open the doors of my office for any member of the company to come and pray with me. From struggle to success, from 10 customers to millions of customers. Looking back, how important was that five-year litigation process to get the telephone license? It was extremely important because one of the core things that came out of that identity was everybody knew that I was fighting a battle against corruption. I could have solved that problem in one day, okay? By just agreeing to say, okay, I can accommodate this one, I can accommodate that one, it would have been over. And the people knew that. But I stuck it out, I went through the courts and fought the battle. So it says to people, A, you can, you can stand up for what is right. You can say no to corruption. Africa needed to hear that message very loud that it is possible to be in business, to, to, to do it uh, with a zero tolerance to corruption, and you can be successful. Today it is Zimbabwe's largest company by market capitalization. It controls banks, it controls insurance companies. Econet is the largest single taxpayer in Zimbabwe. The Lord says, I'll lay a table for you in the midst of your enemies. We have a very good relationship with the government today. What have I learned today? Two things. First, at a young age, Masiiva has built one of the most successful company in Africa from a poor landlocked country with a corrupt government. Second, he built his company Econet on values. It's a company of prayer with zero tolerance for corruption. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Strive Masiiva, Beacon of Africa, Nine Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.